right now at this very moment, I want to talk to Daniel Jeremiah. We got him on the phone, one yeah, of the senior reporters at the NFL Media Group. Uh, you can follow Dan Daniel at um, Daniel DJ. I, I, that's why I'm having a hard time. Nobody calls him Daniel. You can follow DJ at Move the Sticks on Twitter. Uh, and as I said, this guy has been a scout for the Baltimore Ravens, the Cleveland Browns, the Philadelphia Eagles, so he knows what's going on. And so, DJ, thanks for joining me, man. Oh, thanks for having me on, E.D. How much, uh, how much Hackenberg has Law been talking today, or is he giving you a day off? Um, he's giving me a day off. Law, uh, he hasn't mentioned Hackenberg <laughs> once. We're going to get to it with Todd Bowles, who's our next guest, though, DJ. So, you know, that's why, you know, Todd Bowles, you thought he was coming on because he's your former teammate and a buddy. So I don't know. He's coming on, so we <laughs> talk about Hackenberg. That's why he's coming on. That's, that's the only reason they wanted to get him, and, and believe me, I'm, I'm sure that that subject will uh, come up without question. <laughs> That, well, you know, and now let's let's go to some other rookies right now. Who, who's been the most impressive rookie for you so far? Well, I mean, if you look at the quarterbacks, Dak Prescott, what he did, you know, on a national televised game there on on the uh, as big of a stage, I guess you can have in the preseason with 91K at the Coliseum. He looked comfortable. I mean, I, I always my philosophy on preseason, right or wrong, has always been, uh, look, it's never bad news to play good. Uh, that that's you know that's a good thing. It, there is uh, there is a little bit more to be concerned about if things don't go well than there is to be excited about if things do go well. But uh, I thought he did a nice job. I thought Derrick Henry running the ball the other day, yeah. um, you know, kind of reminded me a little bit of going through the draft process with him. I knew he was going to take a lot of criticism because he's kind of got that unique high uh, running style. But at the end of the day, sometimes as is, is personnel guys, scouts, GMs, you can, you can look a little bit too long at something. I mean, the guy's big. He's fast. He's explosive. He ran for 2,000 yards in the SEC. Like, it's, it's not rocket science. I think this guy's going to be pretty good. Uh, what rookie are you looking for in week two? Who, who do you think can flash? Well, I mean, I wanted to see more Carson Wentz, but we won't see him now for a little bit. You know, all these young quarterbacks. He, you know, Paxton Lynch, to me, is, 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 uh, uh, is interesting because – that quarterback position up there in Denver, you went a Super Bowl. I think Peyton was, what, nine touchdowns, 17 picks. They won yeah. the whole thing. So I don't know if the bar's all that high for them to still play at a high level. So the more I see that team, and I think their defense is loaded again, they might be able to allow a young quarterback to play early and kind of go through some of those growing pains and still win some ugly football games. Uh, you, uh, you mentioned young quarterback in, in – whether whether or not the bar was high for him. I'm, I'm getting to Jared Goff. I, I saw his stat line, and Goff's stat line, you know, he had two drops. He was four for nine, but two of those balls should have been caught, and he threw a nice ball down the middle. I didn't think his performance was all that bad. How, how did you feel about his performance? No, I mean, there wasn't a, there wasn't a lot to judge. I mean, he gets picked, he gets some pressure, gets hit, and ball pops up in the air, and he gets picked off. Then you had a couple drops. I thought it was like what you'd expect. I mean, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a mistake early. I thought he did, showed some mental toughness to recover from that, threw the ball pretty well, and didn't get helped out. I mean, I, I, thought, I thought the same thing for Carson Wentz. I thought he threw the ball pretty well, had two or three drops. So you can't scout the stat line. you got to watch the tape. I thought there was uh, definitely some signs to be encouraged by. I just thought it, it sucked from a development standpoint to not get him out there more because I don't know that we're going to see him early in the season, and these preseason reps are, are pretty precious to get some live bullets flying and Unfortunately, he got a little picked up on his off shoulder and had to pull him out a little early. Uh, we're talking to Daniel Jeremiah, uh, senior reporter for the NFL Media Group. This is the Rich Ivan Show. I am Eric Davis. Uh, DJ, uh, Darrell Green Beckham getting traded <laughs> to Philly. What is that all about? Well, I mean, look, they, they, uh, you know, there were some off field issues with him coming into the league. I actually thought he flashed last year and made some big plays. Uh, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes there. They have a, a rookie in Tajay Sharp out of UMass. They drafted, I want to say, fifth, sixth round that is emerged as a starter there in Tennessee. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you know how this is. Sometimes it can be simply, look, the guy's not picking up what we want him to do, um, you know, some, from a learning standpoint, which I've heard Tajay Sharp has been off the chart in that area. So for Philadelphia, to trade kind of a fringe offensive lineman that's really kind of going to be a backup for you, to get the upside of Doriel Green Beckham. I mean, I know there's some risk involved, but I, you know, with what Philadelphia showed in the preseason week one, I don't know. They got a lot of guys that can can separate and make plays. I mean, why not take a chance here on, on DGB? Yeah, for the Philadelphia fans, who, who would you prepare, uh, who would you compare this player to? Ooh, Doriel Green Beckham is uh, he's he's unique because he's so dang big, physical, uh, 
and trying to find a, a comparison for him is tough because he's big, but he can still run. Uh, man, that's a tough one. You know, physically, who he looks like, just like on the hoof, he looks like Terrell Pryor, who you saw make some, some plays yeah. in the preseason last week. There's just not many guys that are six foot six, two 225, 230 pounds uh, running around outside now. Uh, DJ, you mentioned uh, the quarterback situation up in Denver. Uh, which one of these guys do you think is going to start, Sanchez, Simeon, or Lynch? Who do you think is going to be the starter for these guys long uh, Well, I'm not even going to say long term. Who's yeah. going to start the most games for these guys this season? I'm, I'm, you know, like, I, I, I hate when I do this. I do this every year as I allow <laughs> stuff you see in the preseason to affect your opinion when I should just throw it all out. But, uh, I mean, like I said just a little bit earlier, I think that they are in a position with their roster that they could survive with the young quarterback. And, and to me, the gap has to be significant. I think Sanchez or Simeon have to be significantly better than Lynch because with Lynch, you know he's your long-term guy. So if it's remotely close, you go with the young guy. He's only going to get better, and he's your long-term solution. So I don't know that, that you know over the course of the preseason and all the training camp, I'm not so sure they're going to be able to put enough distance between the veterans and the young guy. Maybe maybe you start out with Sanchez early. I think I think Lynch is going to start more games than any of those quarterbacks this year. You sound like you sound like me on that one. That, that's how I feel about that as well. Yeah, I, I think Brockman has a little fantasy stuff he wants to talk to you about. Yeah, what's up, DJ? <laughs> what's up, dude? How's your basketball game right now? Uh, the jumper is the jumper is always going to be there, but uh, you know we're, uh, we're 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 staying away from the competitive uh, games now. You know, you tear your Achilles once. That's the uh, that's the old fool me once, uh, shame on you. You <laughs> fool me twice. That's that's kind of my bad. So I, I will not uh, I will not tear my other Achilles. That's my life goal. Yeah, but isn't it like lightning? Like, aren't you? You're like that's not never going to happen again, right? What are the odds of you tearing it a second time? So why don't you just you know roll the dice? Nah, yeah, that's, uh, that's one way to look at it. I'm choosing not to look at it. Okay, great. Uh, quick fantasy question. So uh, I started doing some draft prep. I got my huge draft coming up in two weeks. Now I'm looking at rookies as a possible sleeper. So aside from Ezekiel Elliott, which I assume will probably go in the first, first or second round for a lot of people, who are some rookies that could have some major impact in the league this year? Well, I'll give you my deep sleeper, who I, you know, I've been kind of touting him a little bit through the offseason with Josh Ferguson with the Colts, who's an undrafted rookie out of Illinois. So I thought was a draftable player, gave him a draftable grade. And, you know, Frank Gore getting old there, not a lot else to go to. But they trotted him out. He started the first week without Gore. So, um, you know, the, look, don't look at his numbers. They were ugly. But as this young offensive <laughs> line, line kind of gelled together with their rookie center, Ryan Kelly, I think they're going to be better. Um, and, you know, with Andrew Luck in there, that's gonna, I think that will help the running game as well. So he's kind of my deep, deep sleeper. And then, Look, if you go back up to uh, to Booker up there with the with the Broncos. I love him out of Utah, Devontae Booker, and I, I think he's a pretty gifted guy now. And I think whoever's playing quarterback there, they're going to rely on the run game and the defense. He could have a nice year. That is Daniel Jeremiah. He knows all things football, and and besides, he's just good people. He's just fun to sit around in the green room and talk to, and just chat with. Another one of those Charles Davis like pop culture guys, just locked in on it all. Oh yeah, he, no, he's he's locked in on it all, and you know, and the thing about it, he's gone through the trenches. He's been there, and he's done the grunt work, so he, he gets it. That's why I love talking to DJ. Hey DJ, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show. All right, anytime, Andy. You're one of my favorites, man. Oh, good talking to you. See you, bud. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.